am joined here with my My Little Pony, the movie version of Twilight Sparkle. She is the replacement from the Tempest Shadow that I bought a few weeks ago. But anyway, can you believe that we're, we only have six episodes to go? Six episodes to go. So, first of all, the recap. My Little Pony Season 7 is working out really well. It's, it's becoming a very good season. I'm really enjoying it very much. Uh, there have been very close bad ones. Like, say, um, hard to say anything. The awkwardness between <laughs> Big Mac and Sugar Bell and Featherbangs, aka Justin Bieber, competing to win Sugar Bell's hearts. Watch the camera, Twilight. Watch the camera. There we go. And there's also been a close, it's been, it's been a bit, I don't know, bad, I wouldn't say bad, but it was funny. But, um, episode with Pinkie Pie and the Axe, can't think of the, can't think of the title right now. But, um, there have been amazing episodes which have won the Golden Applejack Award, but I won't mention those l l yet because there are more, possibly more, that could win the title. Okay, on Affiliate of Emotions, that when where Twilight was reading the stories to the young, sick ch fillies in the hospital. It kind of reminded me of Princess Diana a little bit, because that's one of the things that Diana would have done in when she was alive. Um, you know, because she really, really cared about the children in Africa. She cared about everybody. She was, she was um, Britain's loved princess, and the world's loved princess, really, Diana. And I think, and I think My Little Pony showed a little respect to that, because it was like a, it was like a tribute to um, Princess Diana, because we all know how much we loved Princess Diana, even though I was a little cult back then. Uh, uh, Parental guidance. Wow. We finally, finally get to see Rainbow Dash's mum and dad. And um, what a way to see it. What a way to see them. We waited so many seasons to see what Rainbow Dash's parents looked, looked like. We had theories on what Rainbow Dash's parents looked like. But now we know what Rainbow Dash's parents looked like. Boy, they were great parents, weren't they? <laughs> yes, they must be the world's proudest parents. Every single accomplishment that Rainbow did, they, were, they just made a big deal out of it. They just chanting and saying, Rainbow's the best daughter they ever got, and and it kind of um, paid off actually because that was when Rainbow got her confidence because as we know that if Rainbow doesn't get you know the uh, phrase that that's a great one Rainbow Dash, that's your race Rainbow Dash, your awesome Rainbow Dash basically when she you know fails something that she tries to do, she really gets down. She really, really gets down. As 
seen on testing, testing, one, two, three. She was really excited when she was uh, going through the Wonderbolt um, entry exam. Twilight tried to help her with the uh, entry exam, but we knew that she had a bit of a short attention span, which unfortunately she didn't really get the facts about the Wonderbolts and she knew straight away that she was going to fail and become the worst Pegasus ever. Next, Applejack's parents. We get to see Applejack's parents. Yes! The parents. Yes, yes, yes. Applejack's, Big Macs and Apple Blooms. We get to see their parents for the first time in years. Woohoo! Will we see them again? That's the mystery. But what an episode. What an episode. Yes. This episode. A health of information. It was a good episode. Yes, it was a good episode. However, I did notice that Twilight was slightly off character because you know what she's like with her books and you know, a room full of books and as we saw in A Crystal Empire Part 1, she was like starstruck with the, uh, the library of books. She was basically like, you know, you do. You really do. She was basically in circles, just admiring all the books around her in, in the Crystal Library. But seeing her, I don't know, tired, don't care about research as much as I used to. Is it because I'm getting older? Hmm. Nah. I don't know why that happened, but until I realised it was a bit um, Hooffields and McCults, Twilight's spirit kind of flown onto Fluttershy because she was the insistent pony. She insisted that Twilight come with her and, you know, she was pushing her and everything on that area, you know, the flank area. And, uh, you know, she was saying, uh, lead the way, Fluttershy. And to base an episode on one of the most horrible things that happened in world history, the plague, also known aka the Black Death, that spread across Europe. Yeah. Right, that, that's the <coughs> recap of the whole season so far. Well, mo most episodes of the season. Now, the nominee candidates of Pony of the Year 2017 so far. They are confirmed, but it's not all of it yet. I know we've got another six episodes to go, but we have candidates for my... For my Pony of the Year 2017. The first one. Rarity. Rarity? The drama queen, the I'm so pampered and don't touch dirt and ooh icky water and I'll faint at any time. Rarity? Yeah. Rarity. Because as we saw on Forever Philly, she was, she was, it was like, she, it was like she transformed or something. Uh, like, when she played that, what assumingly to be an electric guitar, but happened to be like a mini acoustic guitar, but in like a heavy metal rock style. And then, she is eventually learning that you don't have to be 
a drama queen, you don't have to be social like the cantaloupe ponies. Just be yourself and be generous. Use your generosity element in its proper use, you know? I can't really, I don't know if that's the right words to say, to, to describe why Rarity is nominated, but um, yeah, Rarity is a nominee candidate. And also, Punk Rarity as well. She didn't care much about her looks th anymore. I mean, yeah, okay, she did when her hair, when her mane was ne nearly all gone. But uh, she seemed pretty okay with having the punk style uh, in the end, don't you think? Does that does that seem changed to you? So that's p pony number one. Pony number two. Maud Pie. Why more Pie? Hmm. I think that's the second time she's been nominated. Uh, Maud Pie is nominated because on Rock Solid Friendship we found a dark side of Maud. Yes, a very, very dark secret. That's pony number two. Pony number three. Daring Do. Daring Do, because, because, you know, we all love Daring Do, don't we? Um, I just think because she wanted to retire on Daring Done, hence the title, Daring Done, but she did sort of have her adventurous spirit inside of her, didn't she? Uh, and yet she became the Daring Do we all know now, and hopefully she will be. You know, because we all love Daring Do. So, pony number three, Daring Do. Now, there could be history on my pony of the year, because there could be a joint winner. Now, I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't, I didn't want to do it because, again, I kind of face my, you know, I kind of base my winners on the Oscars, but, and I don't think the Oscars had joint winners, so, but I, I just had to. I just had to, okay? I just had to. Right. Joint ponies number one. Windy Whistles and Bo Hot Hooves. What can you say about them? What can you say about them? The proudest parents in the world, most enthusiastic, they love their daughter and you, and you guys know it, guys and girls know it, and uh, they were very, very well voiced as well, especially Windy Whistles, because it sounded similar to uh, Rainbow Dash, which makes sense because that's why Rainbow's kind of raspy. That's why Rainbow had a ras has a raspy sort of voice because of her mum, in a way. I don't know. But, um, and the thing we know about the connection of Rainbow's parents is that she's got the looks of her mother and the determination and guts of her dad. I'll be right back. I am back. So, joint candidate number two. Pear Butter Buttercup and Bright Mac. What can I say? Most romantic couple in the series so far. In my head, like a catchy song, is such a beautiful song by Pear Pear. See, that's that's why I call it Buttercup. It's easier. It's easier by Buttercup. But in my head, like a catchy song by Buttercup. 
is a very beautiful sun and it was such a beautiful episode a perfect pair such a beautiful episode it was so, it was like Romeo and Juliet in a way because you had the apple family on one side and you had the pear family on the other side uh Grand Pear in his in his uh, young days was kind of stubborn on trying to get along with the apples, I guess. Uh, and Brian Mac happened to meet a Billy, who was from the Pear family, and they just happened to fall in love and grow up together and eventually grow make a bond. That that uh, grew, grew and bloomed, and it was oh man, wow, wow, wow. So that is my joint candidate number two. Well, I have to end this video now. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned on my Twitter page, which I will post now. to find out who is the winner of Pony of the Year 2017. And at the end of the season, I shall announce the Golden Applejack episodes throughout the season. Until then, bro hoof and goodbye, and see you in Bristol.